23rd of January 2015. Okay, perineal hernias in dogs. Now, perineal hernias are a defect in the pelvic diaphragm here. So there's a defect and the, the muscle, there's a big defect in the muscle. So the intestines, the fat and the bladder of prostate in a male dog will come out, making it very big. Now there are, there are three, two types of uh, perineal hernia, as you can see from here. Now one type is, this is the normal anatomy. The bladder is inside here, the prostate is there. This is a male dog. Now in, uh, in, the, in this case, this dog, uh, this dog, and this dog, this is, this is what happened. Um, in this dog, there's a big hernia. The bladder has come out here at the lower part. The bladder come out here, there's a big swelling. And then the rest, the fat and the intestine come out on top here. But now this is because it's uh, operated already, so you can see nothing. It's a flat. But I have other videos showing this dog with a big swelling here. Okay, so this is considered the case where the bladder comes out, a full bladder. But there's no problem in uh, urination. Now, the, the other type of hernia is where there is prostatic enlargement. The prostate is enlarged. Normal prostate is this size, very small. But in some male dogs, as they grow older, the prostate becomes bigger and bigger. Now, in this case, the prostate comes very big. And, uh, okay, it goes. Then you can see from here, this is a case I'm talking about where the this of the is a big the prostate is hernia that is like the lower part. Uh, okay, we're talking about a ten-year-old male, not near to former Indian. Okay, so in this case, the prostate is enlarged, and this prostate has a uh, herniated out. You can see the prostate is like this, and uh, it shows show here, and. Uh, on the on the drawing here, I can show uh, this is the dot actually. You can see this hernia that the prostate has come out to here. Uh, this, this is the one where you I can feel a very hard lump. So it's not a tumor, it's it's a prostate actually. But in the other dog, just on the white mini maltese, there was a soft lump here. This soft lump is the bladder inside the hernia. So now I go to the next slide. Next slide is after the surgery. Same as the other dog, just now you saw. We just do a cut here, simple hernia. In similar way, we just cut and then we just uh, push everything back in and then we stitch up like just now you saw in the dog. Okay, so now this case I want to talk about is because the prostate. Now this is the prostate as you can see. It's very much enlarged, and you look at the size, it's similar to this. Let's see this drawing. This is the enlarged prostate, and you can see this is the normal prostate. Normal prostate, enlarged prostate. Then, now we see the next slide. Next slide will show you that there's a lot of this uh, something like cysts, like hyperplasia. And you look at this, it's similar to this. So. This, this shows that this is a prostate, benign prosthetic hyperplasia because there is no pain or infection. The enlarged prostate in the, has lodged in the left perineal hernia of this 10 year old Pomeranian. Okay, then we see the next slide. And uh, it looks much like this, it looks so much like a tumor, but it's not a tumor inside this uh, perineal hernia. Another view. Now you can see really, this, this is a very rare thing. You seldom see such a big and large prostate in a hernia. Normally you see a bladder. Yes, bladder is quite common. So that's why I'm showing you this. It, it's a firm golf ball growth during surgery to repair the hernia. You can see this, but this dog has no problems peeing and pooping. So there is no infection, so it's a 
any benign prosthetic hyperplasia. As you can see, compared to this, drawing is almost similar. You can see that. The, so this is definitely a very uh, rare finding of a large prostate being herniated into the perineal hernia. Okay, so now we see the next slide. Okay, so I'm just showing this video because I, I, I just want the vets to know that when you see something like this, firm and hard, it's not the abdominal tumor but actually it's a prostate. Especially when you see the structure, the structure, uh, it definitely is not a bladder. You have this cystic structure, the bladder is definitely a plain uh, transparent membrane, there's no cyst around. Okay, so just be careful. If you cut this off, that means there's a big problem because the urethra actually from the bladder, come here there, show it. The urethra from the bladder goes to the prostate and then it comes up to the penis. So if you, if you think this is an abdominal tumor and you, you cut it away, then this dog will die because uh, you have cut away the, the urethra so you cannot pee. So be careful and uh, that is the the prosthetic hyperplasia. Now we come to this. This uh, just now the dog. Very uh, near hernia of this. Uh, that I show this dog, who's going home today. This is the fourth day, and it heals very nicely. Fourth day of uh, repair, simple repair. Okay, now this, the dog is here. Okay. Now you can see this video. There, this dog is the. You can see here. Zoom on to here. Zoom on to here. There's something wrong with the internet, so it's not moving. Okay. Oh, see here. Then. Today is January 19, 2015. Uh, this dog is this. Okay. This male ah, okay. is male. It's about eight years old. Has a large swelling here on the right perineum. So this is called a right perineal hernia. Okay. Because on the right side. No, this is the swell. left side there is no hernia. This one is actually now, it's a bladder. I feel a what happened was soft that, uh, here, that bladder. So this is not prostate. The, the swelling was very small. Hmm. But the owner is the didn't, intestine? Uh, didn't do anything about it. Intestine. Not so but still the dog is eating and drinking. So, so there is no this, problem. It's different from the other. Now this perineal hernia. It, it happens mostly in male dogs. So uh, they are not sterilized. This one is not sterilized, and there is another testicle here, a retained testicle here. Okay, okay so you can see yeah, this most is of the, the most of the time you don't find it in female bladder, bladder, dogs, but it have, it's very rare in females. So it's believed to be due to the hormones, uh, the testosterone, which uh, affects the the pelvic diaphragm, so the opening becomes loose, the muscles split and the intestines, the momentum effect, and sometimes the bladder and the prostate comes up. Now, you look at this, this uh, hernia is very big, so it's very hard to push in right now. Huh? Now I can feel something here. Uh, this is a bladder. Something here. Eh? So, we don't know whether it's a stool or not. Uh, you look at here, it, it looks like, it looks like it yeah. could be a, a large prostate. No, it's a bladder actually. Because when when you open up, you see. Uh, benign hypertrophy, benign prosthetic hypertrophy. In this case, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quite a, a bit long here. Mm. This could be the prostate because old dogs have prosthetic enlargement. Mm. Now, this part of the aumental fat and uh, intestines. But so far, the dog can eat and drink and pee and food. Okay, so in this case. Go to the educational part of the previous case. Uh, we finished all now this. the previous cases are done. So we see this one, the cases is here, there. Okay, now this one. So just now the, the mini Maltese is actually this one, where the bladder has come out. Okay, as compared to the palm, the palm was the prostate that has come out. So these are the two cases I want to show. And uh, the prosthetic hypertrophy, that's why it is so large. Normally it's very small, so you, you don't see it coming out in the hernia doesn't come in the perineal hernia. Okay, so now we go for the treatment. Now we'll discuss the treatment. So, come here, we discuss the treatment now. 
There are, there are three methods of treatment. The simple method is uh, just the simple method is just uh, make a cut, make a cut, and then stitch up uh, the muscle area one to the other. I won't go into the technical part, but basically, you stitch the muscle simple interval suture stitch from one side to the inner splinter side. Okay, that, that is the surgery, and then after that, you just close up the skin like this. So this is a simple hernia, simple hernia raffi, simple hernia raffi, and that's what we did in these two dogs. Okay, then the other one is a more complicated one because the hole is too big. If the hole is too big, then we use the mesh. Okay, this is the mesh. It costs at least hundred dollars per mesh uh, for this hernia repair. So this is very expensive for this surgery. But in certain cases, where the where the hernia is very big and the muscles are very weak, are very weak, then we use this, and uh, so we cut we cut the mesh and uh, make it into a funnel. We cut half of it, uh, make the funnel. I mean, depend on the size of the hole, make the funnel and put it in, put inside the, the hernia hole. Okay, the hernia hole is so big, you can see from this side, it's so big. Then we put this cone in, we put this cone in and uh, further in, put further in, then we stitch up with a non absorbable nylon, the muscle, the muscle of the, the hernia side and after that we close up the skin now this is a very expensive method because this mesh is costly so uh, the third method is where they use the muscles where they transpose the muscle the muscle from one side to the other side now this one I would not uh, go into detail but it's called muscle transposition muscle transposition and this one is more, more uh, detailed and technical to do so there are three methods of repairing the perineal hernia at least three methods okay can we finish thanks